Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. This is another installment in my series of uh, Know the Rules and Use the Rules to Your Advantage. Um, this uh, one that I'm going to talk about here, we're going to totally show you how to screw the Americans in the Atlantic. <laughs> it's not very nice to do to them, but that's what we're going to do. And I don't know why more people haven't thought of this. I, I was reading through the forums on accessandallies.org there and, and some people have thought about it but uh, it hasn't been talked about there for a while now it's it's kind of buried in the back pages uh, I was going through some of the back pages looking for things and so I thought I'd bring this one up and what what, uh, what I'm going to show you here probably shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody because they're obvious rules if you know the rules but but to put them together like that to, to screw uh, the Americans or any nation for that matter is what uh, what this series is all about. So let me take you here. This is uh, this is the Europe Second Edition Rule Book, page twenty one, and liberating a territory. So uh, so if you capture a territory that was originally controlled by another member of your side, you liberate the territory. You don't take control of it. Instead, the original controller regains the territory. Um, let me show you what that means. So let's say. Uh, Let's say over here, uh, the Italians take out fr the, this uh, French territory, then they put their marker on there. Now let's say, say that the Americans come along later, and this isn't realistic, uh, I'm just moving these around. Then the Americans come along and they take this out. Now that doesn't, uh, that doesn't become an American territory, that becomes a French territory, okay? Uh, so uh, America has liberated that for France, okay? Um, so that's the first part of it. But in the second paragraph, it says, if the original controllers, uh, that's the power whose territory you just liberated, capital, is in enemy hands at the end of its turn, in which you would otherwise have liberated the ter territory, then you capture the territory instead. And in this case, uh, you know, France always is, is taken out on the first round. So in this case, with the Americans taking this territory back from the Italians, it actually becomes... A, an American territory and not a French territory. And then if you were to go and liberate the French capital at some point in later in the game, then this will come off and that will go back to being a French territory. So that's one part of the rules. That's liberating a territory and liberating um, or capturing a capital. So if you capture a capital, then, then uh, and then uh, capture somebody's territory, then you can keep that territory as long as you took it from the opposition. Like the Americans couldn't, uh, at this point, come over here and take this territory because this this uh, France is on their side, right? Even though they don't have a capital. So America couldn't take this territory, but uh, they could have taken this territory because the the Italians had owned it. Okay, so that should be that should be pretty clear. And I think that most of you know that rule. Okay, so then we get to right below that we got capturing and liberating capitals. Let's just go down here, um, down to this paragraph here. It says the original con uh, controller of the captured capital is still in the game, but can't collect income from any territories that he or she controls and can't buy new units. Um, so it goes on from there, but that basically that's all we need to know for this. And then. We're going to go, that's uh, page 21, we're going to go to page 28, and we're going to look at, um, where are we here, naval bases. Here we are, naval bases. And if we look down here at the subject of damage, a naval base is considered inoperative if it has three or more damage points. It can't service sea zones, increase sea range, or conduct repairs. So, uh, uh, if you damage a, a, a naval base down to where it has more than two points of damage than, than the naval base is inoperational. Okay, so let's put all that together. Let's move this rule book aside here. And we're gonna talk about Sea Zone 91 here. Now, Sea Zone 91 is one of the most important territories in the entire game, or zones. This would be a, a sea zone, I guess, not a territory. But it's one of the most important uh, 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 spaces on the entire game. Uh, let's move these aside for now. Uh, let's say that it's it's uh, Germany's third turn. Um, so uh, we'll move this back. I'm just going to move the stuff back that I was moving already. And this goes back here, and this goes back here. Okay. So 
This sea zone is very, very important because of this naval base here on Gibraltar. Um, the Americans, uh, they're three spaces away from there, so they can go with their transports and other ships, they can go one, two, three into sea zone 91 here. Um, what is equal or even more important is that they can get back to America because of this naval base. See, they had a naval base in the east, eastern United States there as well. That's why they could go three spaces. But they have this naval base here, so that means they can go back three spaces. And that's important because when you want to set up a transport shuck, um, that's when you're, you have transports coming both ways at the same time, so you're constantly flowing troops in. And CZO 91 is important for that because that's the middle point. From CZO 91, you can go three more spaces because of this naval base. You can reach all the way up there to Norway. You can go to Denmark. You can go to Holland. You can go to Normandy. Uh, in the Mediterranean here, from that sea zone, you can go to southern France. You can go to northern Italy, you can go to southern Italy, you can go anywhere along North Africa up to Tobruk here. So from sea zone 91, you can hit many places. Um, and it's because of this naval base. And this naval base is very important. And because of that naval base, sea zone 91 is very important. So how do we screw them out of that? Well, we just, we, we were reading rules there where uh, if you take somebody's capital, they, they don't get any money and so they can't spend any money. Um, we know that if you take out somebody's uh, 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 naval base, that it uh, they can't do they can't use it anymore until they repair it. So if you were to take out this naval base here for the the British and take out their capital up there, then there's nobody to repair that naval base. So what you would do, and I'm not going to move all the pieces around, but let's just say for the sake of argument, you take this. German pie here, you remove all that stuff up there. So they went sea line on turn three and they took out London. So UK no longer has a capital in uh, on the European side of the board. And remember, even if they had a capital in, still a capital in India, you cannot spend any of your IPCs from India on the Europe side of the board and vice versa. You couldn't spend any of your, your European money on the Pacific side of the board, you have to, uh, the, the British player has to keep their money on that side of the board or this side of the board, depending on which income it is, uh, the Europe or the Pacific income. So the Americans want to use that naval base. So what, what you've done now is you've taken out London and you've taken their money. Good for you. And you brought the Americans into the game as well. Um, but then you, you take uh, some, uh, uh, you can take, say, this bomber here, if you want to do it on the same turn, and come down here and bomb this air base and get it down to where it's, or get it to where it's more than three points of damage, and that would be no problem. If there was nothing on Gibraltar, then uh, no, no fighters on um, Gibraltar, then that would be no problem to, to take that naval base out. Um, you just need to basically roll a zero because you add two to a strategic bomber. What you don't want to do though is you uh, you do not want to um, come down here with a transport and bring dudes down here and take out Gibraltar. Because if you take out Gibraltar, um, if you take out Gibraltar and make that into Italian space, or if you came down with the Germans, if you if you were to do that with the Germans and take Gibraltar out with the Germans, then the Americans could then come down and take it from you, and then they could repair this naval base. But if you just leave it in British hands and uh, uh, don't come down with with any of your stuff, then there's nothing the Americans can do about that. The Americans uh, are not allowed to re repair this naval base because it's not theirs. This is a UK naval base. It's not America's naval base. Uh, so you can't use the UK Pacific's money. You can't repair it with the Americans. Um, UK, uh, Atlant or the Europe side, does not have any money, so it can't repair it. So now you, you've, you've effectively taken, removed that uh, naval base from the board. It, it's still there, but it, it's damaged, so you can't use the benefits of it. So now you can, you can still come over here, your three things, but your three spaces that you can go from the naval base in, in uh, Washington, but you can't do any a transport shock anymore. The only way that you could do that is if uh, the Americans were to, were to take out Morocco, like 
if uh, so that's another thing you wouldn't want to take out Morocco with uh, with uh, the Axis powers because the Americans could build a naval base here if they were to come down and take it and then C zone 91 has its power back because like I said it's that naval base that, that gives C zone 91 that much power uh, so as long as you don't take out this one as the uh, Axis and you don't take out Gibraltar as the Axis then uh, then the Americans will never have a naval base on there until the the capital up there is liberated the Americans are going to have to liberate London in order to have the UK pay down the damage on that uh, on on that space there on Gibraltar so that's kind of interesting isn't it uh, uh, just you just got to remember uh, don't take the this space out with, with uh, either of the axis uh, or with Japan. I mean, Japan's not going to have anything to do with it, let's face it. And then bomb the shit out of it so that it's not operational anymore. And then C Zone 91 loses all its power. Can't do a transport truck anymore. You can't reach all those spaces that I showed you. That, that boat will only be able to go two spaces after that. Um, the Italians will be locked into the Mediterranean. They won't be able to make it out into the Atlantic. Uh, but that's okay. You know, like a, that's a that's a trade that I'd be willing to make if I was the Axis is not being able to move any Italian boats out into the Atlantic. I don't generally do that anyway. Um, they could still go out uh, this way if, uh, uh, and uh, they probably would eventually because if the UK lost their capital and they didn't get it back, then they're not going to be very powerful down here, right? But anyway, that's that's kind of a cool thing that you can do is is. Uh, is if you do sea line, um, and if you do, if you're going to do sea line, you got to make sure the Italian player knows, and it could be you uh, as well. You could be playing both of them. So, but if it's not, if it, if it's another person playing the Italian side, then you want to make sure that they understand what you're going to do. So, if you you are committed to doing that sea line attack, whatever you do, don't take out Gibraltar if you're the Italians or the Germans, because then you can go bomb that base, and the Americans are screwed after that. Anyway, that's all I got for you here today. So, um, know the rules. Use the rules to your advantage. Take care, everyone. General Hand Grenade out.